Hey there guys, so this is a unboxing because this is a cordless machine. I can't really do a review on it yet unless the battery says it's full when I put it on the um, vacuum. But this is a Hoover Lynx. So this is a funny story, but I guess I shouldn't say funny story because it's really not funny. Um, it's just a general informational story. The Hoover brand released probably back in like the late 2000s. I'm going to push more towards like 2009, 2010. Um, for the Hoover Platinum Collection. They released it. They had several machines. Two of them were cordless. One was this Hoover Platinum Lynx and the Hoover Platinum Lynx Handvac. Um, this is a wind tunnel machine, and that was not a very successful line. They made lots of nice machines. All of their machines were great. Um, I'm not too sure about the canister. That was very limited places, and so was the bagless upright. The canister was also bagless. Um, but they basically tried to take on Dyson, and that was probably, I want to say it was before Shark really started to come to market too. And Sharks existed for a long time, but they existed for probably 50% of their... Um, I want to say 50% of their existence was really just kind of under the radar. They just kind of produced stuff um, really under the Euro Pro, which they still might be owned by now, but the stuff wasn't good back then. Um, but these Hoovers, there was a select few that did really well. This Platinum Lynx, or now it's just called the Lynx, and the Hoover bagged. They actually pedaled out for quite some time. Don't really know if it's because it was successful or if they just had a lot of leftovers. But Hoover, for years, has liked to do um, this thing where they either mass produce or they just sell as many as they can towards the end and discount them down. The Hoover Wind Tunnel Anniversary did that for a while. Oryx Magnesiums were for sale at Walmart, and this one I picked up at Walmart. This was put on clearance there a couple months ago, or rollback, for 89 bucks, and now they are $64. I went back to pick one up today. Um, today is Thursday. I saw them Monday, and I told myself when I um, got out of work before Walmart closed, again, I would go back and find them. Well, they moved them. And I found out that they put them in the clearance aisle. They had already clearanced them down to the 64 bucks, but instead of leaving them out on a pallet in the middle of the aisle, they moved them to clearance, similar to the Auric Magnesiums. So you can see it was $148.94, but this was never for sale at my Walmart before it was on rollback. So it's almost like they brought it out onto the floors and then rollbacked it. You can see it's um, it was 89 bucks. Now, why did I pick this thing up? Because these always looked a little interesting to me, but I was never willing to spend full-size upright money on a cordless. So you can see all the, the Lynx stuff here. Lynx cordless stick vac. What's the other packet? And then you get the battery, which I don't know exactly why. Sorry if this is really shaky. Um, you get the owner's manual for the battery as well. So I'm going to move those out of the way. Now that I work, since I graduated and I started um, being a therapist um I don't have a lot of free time so nobody likes to vacuum in the house except for me so this looks like the charger that I've got in my hand they've wrapped it in red probably so you don't throw it away now even with stick vacuums I kind of have my um preferences I like a stick vacuum with a docking station I will not buy a stick vacuum that you have to um, plug the whole thing physically in. I want a docking station or I want a, an extremely long run time so I never have to plug it in like that or some way to remove the battery that also has a docking station because I tell you what, this is my Kenmore 
Stratus stick vacuum, and it has a docking station. Very similar to the Electrolux Ergo Rapidos that they had a long time ago. And I bought this Lynx regardless as to whether this, um, let me rephrase that. This stick vacuum is meant for hard floors only. It even says it on the box. It says hard floor stick vacuum. The bristles are very soft. They're very continuous across the brush roll. There's no gaps. It's really not intended for cleaning carpet and it really doesn't clean carpet. It's more for dusting and just picking up fine stuff on the floor. Um, and this Hoover Lynx is meant for area rugs and um, general cleaning. So I would have bought this regardless, depending on whether my Kenmore stick vacuum only did floors or it did carpets too. It was really the deal. The price was really good on it. Um, the handle feels very nice. It kind of has a roller switch here, and I'll show that to you um, as I slide it down. Gotta try and get situated here. So there is a little switch, a thumb switch here that rolls to, I'm assuming, uh, there's a suction only and then there's suction and brush roll. I would guess that this lights up. There is, yeah, because there's, um, some, some wiring connections there. So it is an electronic switch. Here's the main body of the vacuum. Now, Hoover has been putting out their One Power for a little while, and they tried this in the past, like with the Lynx thing. Um, they had that One Power, they've got the One Power Dash, they've got, and I just, I don't know, I don't think that it's going to be very successful, because, you know, Hoover just has a lot of flops. They had the... Um, react series that flopped <laughs> and i wanna before i continue along i wanna put the handle in really fast and then maybe put the base on and then show it to you guys okay so here it is all put together first impressions because i won't think this later on so i am always trying to give first impressions of this thing because it's just like when you buy a car which i did just recently buy a new volvo um when you buy a car, it's like it feels totally different, and then after you have it for a while, you're used to it. Um, this is a little bit larger than I had assumed. It's bigger than my um, Kenmore, that's for sure. And this thing does not sound quite the same as some of the cheapo um, like stick backs of yesteryear that all had that really weird, like, you could tell it sounded very... Um, battery powered that droney um sound it almost sounded like a kid's toy this one does that on power up and power down but overall i think that the power brush sounds like it's pretty strong and um i like the build quality it does kind of you know have like a little bit of a flop to it but that's because the base locks in with friction it doesn't actually have like a pedal release on it or anything that the battery seems like it's semi-charged up so i'm gonna try and use it until it dies and then i'll charge it up um and i probably will go back and get another one of these we'll see um the brush roll i'll show you is clean on the bottom nice and clean the bin's clean um, the bin comes off the back of this machine, and I'll also say, I don't think that bagless, or no, I shouldn't say bagless, I don't think that cordless vacuums are at that point yet where we can just say, hey, you know, screw it, we don't need corded vacuums anymore, which is why um, I don't know as if I can quite justify the price for a cordless Dyson unless I got it a, a really good deal, which... I should rephrase that. I can't justify spending the money for one of the newer, like, V11s because they're so expensive. Now, there is quite a bit of weight of the vacuum in the handle, and this does not really swivel at all. So, let's see what it does. It's already got some hair.
I really want to see how well it does on hard floor. So it does not get as low as my Kenmore does. And I'm kind of used to a swivel now. So it is kind of different because it feels like this will swivel, but it won't. It'll move just a hair and that's about it. And it's also not really pulling anything right into it. That pulled the hair in a bit, but it's not pulling like the smaller particles in. And that's something that I've always noticed with cordless backs. They just tend to not really have the same sort of pickup power. That the big backs do. That's kind of always been the rule of thumb with most vacuums that are cordless. They just, they don't have that power that you're looking for. But I don't want to say that this is underpowered. This probably has more suction than the Penmore that I have, which is nice. It's just not as maneuverable. Now, they have a new Hoover One Power cordless that I think they advertise to basically have um, a lot of power. It's basically the size of a full-size upright. It's about $150 to $200 depending on where and what day you buy it. Still got a good about a good bit of swirly action going on down there. We got that up. So, um, it got some hair wrapped around this, um, shroud up here and I'll pull this off. So there's my filter. It, not, it does stand up kind of nice on its own and it did get some du dust and dirt up. Primary filter, baffle filter. I don't know why this one must be a picture of a Royal model or something. So... It shows you your primary, and you can see, like, the dirt separation's not the greatest. Um, it tells you to clean it once a month. It did get some stuff up, and this is kind of more like a traditional vacuum with the way that it's designed. And a little bit easier to dump out, which I do like. My Kenmore, you have to take off the whole um, unit the whole handheld unit just to be able to get it um, to clean, to clean out the filter and everything. And usually when I'm vacuuming with like my, the big vacuum, I'll take it over, vacuum up cat litter, and then I'll clean out the Kenmore stick vacuum. But overall, I mean, I think that this did an okay job. Would I be upset if I didn't get one of these? Probably, but now that I have one, I don't really know as if um, I would be too, too upset if there were um, now knowing how it performs. It's not bad. It's just not the greatest. Let's see how it does with this. Okay, 
So, I mean, it does pick up pretty well. I don't have the brush roll on. Um, but I would say that when I ran it on the carpet out there, just to kind of see how well it would do on carpet, I'd say carpet is definitely not its strong suit. It's good for like these types that we have like here in front, but um, our cats, they are very high maintenance. So that's why we have a lot of hair um, places. They shed all the time and we have cat litter on the floors because it gets stuck in their paws because they're Persian cats. So um, it looks like our house is dirtier than it really is. It's mostly just it has to be cleaned on a regular basis. Um, but like stuff like this, we'll see how it does really quick before I go and end the video. <laughs> Sounds like it spins pretty good. So that did a really good job cleaning this right here. It did really good right there. So that's a nice little spot that I could probably use it and rely on it to clean up. Um, like the air, like small area rugs and like um, some of these microfiber mats that we have, but these cats are just so difficult to keep up with. So um, I think that this has a nice little spot in my house to be able to really clean, kind of like an in-between cleaning this would be good for. Um, and I'd say it probably picks up very similarly to like my Dyson, um, though the functionality isn't as extensive as the Dyson V7 that I have because I can pop that off and use it as a hand vac, though I really only like using the powered um, tool that comes with it because, I'm sorry, but the V8 and below, if you don't run it on maximum suction, which is about two or three minutes worth of runtime, it feels like, they really don't have any air movement for picking up stuff unless you're using an attachment. And even then, it's kind of dismal. So, um, overall, sorry if the video was super choppy, but I was trying to get out as much as I could in, you know, a reasonable amount of time. I've got other stuff to do today. Um, thank you for watching, and drop a comment if you've got any questions.